never again means never again. That the deaths of the millions and the Holocaust, it should be a living lesson. It's not just an historical lesson. I mean, Henry Kissinger played a direct role in the murders of three million plus Laotians, Cambodians, and Vietnamese. Tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands in other countries. 300,000 in East Timor, one third of the country's population, according to Amnesty International. Never again means opposing genocide and in wanton murder and torture today, as well as back in the 30s and 40s. This has got to be a living lesson. It can't be just about history. Henry Kissinger. Henry Kissinger. Henry Kissinger. Henry Kissinger. War criminal. Henry Kissinger. War criminal. Henry Kissinger has not been in government for a few decades. But there's no statute of limitation on inciting murder, organizing murder, organizing torture. Oh, and yes, back in the day, he was illegal wiretapping other members of the White House staff, amongst other things. The point is that Henry Kissinger is a mass murderer. He's responsible for 10,000 plus deaths in the coup that he helped organize against the Chilean democratically elected government. He's responsible for the deaths of 300,000 East Timorese when he and then President Ford encouraged the Indonesian invasion of that country. Something to bear in mind when the United States today is preaching about other countries invading other countries. Moving closer to the present, he was directly involved in helping get the United States allied with invading an invading army from the racist apartheid South African government to invade the newly independent uh, country of Angola. He was involved in helping organize the assassinations or attempted assassinations in countries like Cyprus, Cuba, and many others. He was, of course, involved as a leading proponent of the U.S. war on the peoples of Vietnam, Cambodia, and Laos. Over three million people died as a result of that war, and many to this day continue to suffer from birth defects unnecessary cancers, and so forth. This is Henry Kissinger, but Henry Kissinger is more than just a war criminal. We are protesting him today, not just because of these seemingly old crimes, but because when the city of Chicago and our own mayor invites people like Henry Kissinger to town, rolls off the red carpet to people like our own Donald Rumsfeld, a Chicago area resident. It does not prosecute these demonstrable war criminals. Then it lends the stench of hypocrisy on any United States talk of human rights violations around the world, whether by citizens such as ourselves or by the United States government. We are out here today to say to the Illinois Holocaust Museum that to remember the Holocaust, to learn the lessons of the Holocaust are very valid and very important today. And that's why it is an insult to the memory of the people who died and suffered in the Holocaust that someone like Henry Kissinger should be invited and fed it at this uh, Hyatt Hotel here today. It's a shame, it's a stain upon the city of Chicago that a war criminal like Henry Kissinger is given a pass. And yet the United States has got the goal to talk about human rights violations elsewhere around the world. Now we're going to ask uh, representatives of each of the co-sponsoring groups to say a few words uh, after me here. 
and then we're gonna have an open mic. But I'd like to stress that this protest is not against the idea of a Holocaust Museum or against the Illinois Holocaust Museum itself. Rather, it is a protest against Henry Kissinger, a demonstrable war criminal. It's against oppression of all sorts, including anti-Semitism, including racism, including anti-gay uh, bias, etc. We are against Henry Kissinger because he insults the memory of everyone who takes to heart the slogan, never again. So, um... Jay, where are you? Jay Becker from World Can't Wait. Yeah. Uh, tonight is also um, the 11th anniversary of Shock and Awe, the cynical name that the uh, U.S. government gave to its devastating attack on Iraq that opened up more than a decade of destruction and death for the people there, uh, destruction that is far from over. And that was an attack based on outright lies about weapons of mass destruction that were known to be lies by the Bush regime at the time. So what's the connection with Henry Kissinger? Well, it's actually a rather direct one, in fact. He could be termed the godfather of post-World War II U.S. war criminals. To cite just one example, of so many we cannot list them, he was the one who plotted the expansion of the ground war in Vietnam into Cambodia, a complete violation of international law and completely without any authorization. Fast forward to Obama, and we have a president who has turned the whole world into a battlefield sending death by drone to any country he and his advisors decide to attack without even bothering with a declaration of war. Obama openly discusses drawing up a kill list every Tuesday of those the CIA will target for death by drone without charges or trial, and anyone, anywhere can land on that list, U.S. citizen or not. Will Obama authorize the war on Libya that has left that country in chaos and misery? He offered the novel theory that since no ground troops were being sent in there, no congressional approval was needed ever, taking Henry Kissinger's model even further. Finally, it is a crime under international law to knowingly fail to prosecute war criminals. Uh, so it is not hyperbole. So it's not hyperbole to say that every U.S. administration, certainly since Henry Kissinger, is guilty of war crimes. We just don't have time to list them all. But we will demand and continue to demand that they be prosecuted for their monstrous crimes because American lives are not more valuable than anyone else's and the world truly can't wait for us to put an end to these wars and torture for empire. Thanks to everyone for coming out tonight. It really has to be the case that this man can go nowhere without being met by protests. Thank you, Jay. Okay, if I could ask uh, perhaps someone from 8th day, Kathleen. Thank you. Actually, I'm here um, for the School of the America Watch, who wants to send uh, the greetings and of solidarity uh, for this, this demonstration. And uh, I feel like I'm talking to the choir, but as we know, the choirs need practice. So this is a, a statement from the School of the America Watch. Much of which know, but time and again it seems as though many people in this country, public officials and citizens and people that would invite someone like Kissinger to uh, 
they're, they're, they're asleep. And they continue to suffer from what appears to be collective amnesia of history. I think we remember uh, the Allende, Chile. What about Argentina, Brazil, Paraguay, Bolivia, Uruguay, where Operations Candor disseminated social and political movements in collusion with the, some of the most brutal dictatorships of America has ever seen. We remember and we stand with you today with help uh, to help others as well, to never forget. At a time when our brothers and sisters in Latin America are holding a war criminals accountable for human rights violations committed in the past, many of whom are graduates of the School of the Americas, which is now renamed the Western Hemispheric Institute of Security Cooperation. It's a flagship military training school for Latin American soldiers, funded by our tax dollars. And we in the United States must begin to do the same and demand accountability as well. Without truth, without memory, there's no justice. Without justice, we will continue to fall on our political and ethical demand of never again, Nuka Mas. It is the height of hypocrisy that Henry Kissinger is speaking at the Holocaust Museum here in Chicago. His human rights record in Latin America is abysmal. We remember that Kissinger was responsible for promoting and fomenting the September 11, 1973 coup against democratically elected Chilean President Salvador Allende. We remember that he was awarded a Nobel Peace Prize just one month after this nefarious coup. We remember that in 2003, declassified documents revealed that the U.S. Secretary of State, Henry Kissinger, and a high-ranking U.S. official gave their full support for the Argentine military junta and urged them to hurry up and finish the dirty war before the U.S. Congress could cut military aid to Argentina, thus giving the green light to the 1976 to 1983 military junta as they disappeared 30,000 of their own people. So yes, let's let Kiss Kissinger speak, but not about humanitarian issues, nor peace and justice issues, or even about democratic principles and the rule of law, and much less in places like the Holocaust Museum, where we honor the memories of the martyrs. His record of violating human rights and international treaties tells us that he is ill-suited to speak to these issues and these principles. What can we learn from a criminal that said to General Augusto Pinochet about his brutally repressive dictatorship? And I quote, this is from Henry Kissinger. In the United States, as you know, we are sympathetic with what you are trying to do here. I think that the previous government was headed toward communism. We wish your government well. The only place he should stand to speak is before a tribunal and prosecuted so that we too can begin to demand accountability and to call for justice. Your presence here sends a clear message that we will not tolerate impunity any longer. In closing, let's continue to remember and to continue to struggle for peace and justice everywhere. Salvador Allende Presente, Orlando Natalia Presente, Victor Hara Presente, the more than 50,000 murdered, the more than 30,000 disappeared, countless tortured, and the hundreds of thousands of political prisoners under Operation Condor in Chile, Argentina, 
Iroquois, Paraguay, Bolivia, Brazil. We say presente. Thank you. Thank you, Kathleen. Now, there are a number of other uh, representatives of uh, co-sponsoring organizations here uh, that I'd like to invite to come up here to say a few words. Uh, Jewish Voices for Peace. I'd like to... I'm Elaine Bachman. I'm representing Jewish Voice for Peace. We're a grassroots organization advocating peace for Israeli Jews and Palestine. As defined by the dictionary, a humanitarian is an ethic of kindness, benevolence, and sympathy extended universally and impartially to all human beings. The humanitarian's first obligation is to do no harm. No distinction is to be made in the face of suffering or abuse on grounds of gender, sexual orientation, tribe, caste, age, religion, or nationality. We must ask, is this Henry Kissinger, a leading architect of the U.S. war on Southeast Asia, the key promoter of the 1973 coup which overthrew Chile's government, the organizer for U.S. support in the 1965 coup Indonesia, where the CIA assistance led to the deaths of over 200,000 people. Henry Kissinger supported the assassination of heads of governments in Congo, Cuba, Cyprus, South Vietnam, and no doubt several other countries. Henry Kissinger promoted Operation Condor, a program of torturing and murdering tens of thousands in Argentina, Brazil, Chile, Paraguay, and Uruguay. These are documented known facts, and yet Henry Kissinger's direct involvement in such atrocities has never been questioned or brought to light. Instead, today Henry Kissinger is being recognized as a humanitarian. Who are we? What are we? What kind of world do we want to live in if such a man is being honored with the name humanitarian? Thank you. Uh, now, Lynn from uh, Jewish Voice for Peace is going to read a statement from Rabbi Brett Rosen, who could not be here today. Well, this is a rare opportunity to be in Brant's shoes, but I'm honored to read this. Um, as a rabbi, Jew, and a person of conscience, I was profoundly dismayed to learn that Henry Kissinger was chosen by the Illinois Holocaust Museum to be the keynote speaker, to be the keynote speaker at his humanitarian awards dinner. This choice is most certainly at odds with the mission and good work of this important institution. I cannot understand how a man who was the architect of our nation's war crimes in Vietnam, Cambodia, Cambodia and Laos was instrumental in the brutal coup in Chile and other acts of illegal international intervention around the world could possibly be considered an appropriate speaker at a gathering that celebrates humanitarianism. The mission of the Illinois Holocaust Museum and Education Center is to remember the past, transform the future, and to preserve the legacy of the Holocaust by teaching universal lessons that combat hatred, prejudice, and indifference. Given this mission, I urge the museum to think seriously about the messages it sends when it associates itself with figures such as Henry Kissinger. Thank you. Um, next, I want to introduce A.J. Signeri, who's also been part of the planning of this action. He's going to speak briefly for Third, Third Coast Society. So, thank you. Thank you, Jake. Um, I am the program director for Third Coast Society, based here in Chicago. Um, I am one of the plan coordinating of all this. Um, thanks for with Andy and Jay and Eric. Thank you for doing this. Um, very brief. We all know Harry Kissinger is a war criminal. We all know about Operation Condor that's just been mentioned. The very genesis of School of the Americas was the Conference of the Americas. Those people have been missing in Chile, and Bolivia, and Paraguay, and Uruguay. 
we're talking about Harry Kissinger, who has oppress and repress Southeast Asia and Indonesia and Vietnam, who cannot forget Vietnam, we don't forget. The people in there don't, should not forget that too. How can we, re we remember the past, but we need to transform the future. They need to do the same thing by transforming the future, but not inviting this guy to this for $25,000 of speaker bureau. That we need to stop. So I'm not going to take up all the bike. So thank you for everyone coming out here with the Chicago Indian Media and other media people out here. Thank you. We're all fighting the good fight. Thank you. And uh, next, Eric Ruder from International Socialist Organization, which was also part of the planning from GET. I think it's very important that we all came together uh, from across all kinds of divisions, different opinions or whatever, because everywhere Henry Kissinger goes, he has to be met by the strongest protest that we can put together. Thanks. Thanks. It is really a sad day when a figure who should be in prison for what, for the crimes he has perpetrated is actually speaking as a humanitarian to honor other humanitarians. And I think that it speaks to the fact that we have a lot of work to do as a movement so that it's a, 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 a just a reflex that you couldn't possibly invite someone like Henry Kissinger to this kind of an event. It should be embarrassing, and it's not. But I also want to say that at the same time, there is a change going on, I think, and I think that um, that's an important thing to recognize. Uh, I, I think in, in particular, we've seen just in the last week or two, a, a, many developments around a, an issue that for far too long has sort of been beneath the radar, which is the issue of Palestinian rights and Palestinian liberation, and all over the place this is breaking out at this particular moment, and I think that that just needs to be said uh, side by side with the fact that we're here, I think at a, at a somber moment, to say that, you know, Henry Kissinger, you're not welcome in Chicago, you're not welcome as a humanitarian, and you really should be uh, in a prison somewhere. Uh, thanks. Uh, we do have an open mic here. Um, if someone else would like to add their perspective, here's Nick Agnetz from Veterans, Northwest Indiana Chapter of Veterans for Peace, another sponsoring organization. Can't wait to get that bike. Thank you very much, Jay. Thanks, and uh, thank you everybody for coming out here. Uh, we might think that maybe we don't make a difference, but we're, we're witnesses. That's exactly what we are. I remember years ago, Kathy Kelly thanked me for my witness. I didn't even know what it meant. I thought it meant just to see something. But it's to live something. To live in opposition to, the, in opposition to this criminality. This absolute criminality. I'm a Vietnam vet. And Henry Kissinger didn't send me there. He came in a little bit later. But uh, we, we have to object Kissinger and his 
uh, uh, the people who came after him, the United States government. He's been to Afghanistan, to Honduras, to Cuba, to Mexico, and probably a number of places I'm leaving out. So uh, let's give a warm welcome to Buddy Bell of Voices for Creative Nonviolence and Gay Liberation Network. Uh, thank you to the person who mentioned Indonesia. Um, when I was first becoming an activist, one of the stories I heard was about how right after World War II, uh, the U.S. went into Indonesia um, so that they would not accommodate to a newly independent China. This is, was the start of uh, what now we call the Asia Pivot. We're still trying to uh, block in China and block in Russia through wars of choice, uh, including now in Afghanistan, where uh, we have taken out uh, a regime and put in our own, which is hardly uh, any better than the old one. They, we always claim that uh, wars are made in order to expand human rights, expand women's rights, and that just hasn't happened in Afghanistan. Um, with all of the war deaths, with the drone deaths, there are more widows and orphans in Afghanistan. More women and girls are orphaned and widowed. Um, one of the people who I've met in Afghanistan has a sister who is now widowed because her husband was targeted by an aerial attack in Afghanistan. They said, even though we trained you as part of the Afghan local police, even though you're a police officer, we had doubts, and so you were targeted for a drone strike. That's what uh, his mother was told. Um, she said, you don't kill someone based on a doubt, and indeed, that's extremely uh, horrendous for us to be killing people uh, even, even not based on a doubt, even when it's just because someone doesn't uh, follow your orders, who doesn't uh, do what you want in order to, so that your country can be the most powerful on earth. We in Indonesia um, supported the dictatorship in Indonesia. They killed many people uh, through a huge massacre in the beginning. And year after year, Democrats and Republicans, as Nick pointed out, uh, have supported that regime and regimes all over Latin America, um, as Kathleen pointed out. And uh, those are places where we could have expanded human rights just by saying, you know, the guns, the bombs, uh, the money, all of that gravy train is stopping here. So it shows that you cannot have a war of choice by the U.S. And we need to stand against uh, Henry Kissinger's lies. We have to stand against the modern-day Henry Kissinger's. Uh, Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, John Kerry, who are furthering this policy of Asia pivot, furthering the policy of uh, U.S. domination of the economies and peoples of the world. Thank you. I'd like to uh, introduce someone who is part of, uh, I guess just will, part of the Asia Pivot uh, a generation before that, uh, Billy Romo, a uh, Vietnam Vets Against the War, knows firsthand what the policies of Henry Kissinger at all mean. It started out as a Democratic Party war, then turned into a Republican Party war. It was death, death, death. Uh, Barry, thank you so much for being with us today and sharing most of your thoughts. Thank you. Before I came here, I uh, stopped at the Vietnam Vet Memorial in the city to think about the 23,000 Americans that were killed in Vietnam under the Nixon Kissinger regime. They promised peace and they gave five more years of war. Along with that 25,000, 100,000 Americans were wounded and crippled. But in Vietnam, two million people died under the bombing. In December of 1972, I went to North Vietnam, to Hanoi, 
during the peace process. And the war was supposedly over, and we were bringing 535 POWs, packages and letters from home. And three days after we got there, Nixon and Kissinger ordered an attack on North Vietnam in the middle of peace negotiations. Now, I'd always been raised to think the Japanese were wrong for bombing Pearl Harbor. 150 to 200 B-52s a day came in and bombed. Tens of thousands of people killed. The largest hospital in Indochina, Bak Mai, bombed not once, not twice, but three times. The man is a war criminal, and you can give him a war, but it won't bring back the dead, and it won't erase the blood that's on his hands and his soul. We're protesting against Henry Kissinger because you can't let someone of his stature as America's number one living war criminal come to your town and not oppose him. This is a man who's literally got warrants out for his arrest in a number of countries around the world because even if people in the United States don't recognize it, Henry Kissinger is a demonstrable war criminal responsible for hundreds of thousands if not millions of deaths in places like uh, Southeast Asia, uh, Indonesia, East Timor, uh, the uh, uh, Angola, Chile, uh, the list is, is practically endless. He is responsible for attempting uh, to assassinate uh, through the arm of the United States government a number of foreign leaders, uh, sometimes successful, sometimes not really precursing uh, in an undercover way many of the policies that today we see the Obama and Bush administrations pursuing openly. He was the precursor. They have now unfortunately legitimized a number of these illegal policies. So this is a protest not just about the past, it's about the present. Uh, it's also about the present because our government goes around the world preaching to other countries about invading other countries, and yet that was Henry Kissinger's career, whether it was supporting the Indonesian invasion of East Timor or the United States invasion of Cambodia, uh, Vietnam, Laos, uh, the South African racist apartheid government's invasion of Angola shortly after the Vietnam War. Over and over again, this man laid out and promoted the very policies that unfortunately the United States continues to, uh, to foster. And yet the United States goes around the world preaching to other countries about human rights. And there are horrible human rights situations in many countries, both allied to the United States as well as not allied to the United States. But we have got no uh, honor, there's no there's such hypocrisy in the United States talking to other countries about torture or talking about illegal deaths uh, and so forth when we harbor right in our midst here, right on Wacker Drive in Chicago, a war criminal. And worse than that, we're fetting him at a humanitarian awards dinner. It's an insult to our city. It's an insult to the United States. Why did Obama right before he was going to ramp up the Afghanistan war, get the Nobel Peace Prize. Unfortunately, there are organizations and individuals and organizations who, uh, you know, kiss up to power, if you will. And I mean, I don't know the people of the Illinois Holocaust Museum. I think they're shaming the, the memories of the six million plus Jews and three million plus others, including gays. I'm a member of the Gay Liberation Network. Uh, who died in the Holocaust by honoring someone of Henry Kissinger's ilk. I, you know, their reasoning, I, I can only speculate. Um, I think that whatever their reasoning, we as Chicagoans have got a responsibility to our city, uh, our responsibility to the peoples of the world to not say it's okay 
for someone who has organized mass murder to visit our city and us not doing something to try and at least raise consciousness about the crimes that this man has committed. It's, it's important not just for the memories of his victims and the people who survived who were victims, uh, it's also important to, I think, democracy in, in, in civics today because if you allow a war criminal to go unscathed, someone who's literally responsible for murder and torture, how can you expect anyone to follow any rules of society? I mean, when the rich and the powerful get away with these kind of crimes, why should anyone care about the small stuff? And so this is not just about the memories of Henry Kissinger's victims. It's about how can we build democracy? How can we build civic engagement today? And, and frankly, uh, our city fathers and the Obama administration for failing to criminally prosecute people like Henry Kissinger and Donald Rumsfeld at all, uh, they're, they're, they're wrecking what little democracy we've got left in this country as a result.